Welcome everybody to the new fly fisher. I'm your host, Colin Kuhn. You know, we all dream about catching a large trout like this. But the reality is, we can catch fish like this. We just have to change the way we think about fly fishing. Two well-known and respected authors, Bob Lindsman and Kelly Gallup, have recently released a new book called Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout. In this book, they provide information that I consider to be revolutionary about streamer fishing. And it helps you catch big trout, really big trout. In today's show, we're going to join them on a Western Michigan stream fishing for large trout, and they're going to describe the different tackle, techniques, etc., that you need to catch big fish. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. The new Fly Fisher is sponsored by Bank of Montreal Atlantic Salmon Federation MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company. In today's show, we're fishing on the Manistee River on the western side of Michigan. This area is readily accessible by many anglers from major metropolitan areas such as Chicago, Detroit, and Toronto. It is mid-November and unfortunately the weather is not cooperating. Snow has been falling since yesterday and the air and water temperatures are dropping quickly. This will undoubtedly slow down the aggressiveness of the trout, but we should still be able to move some large fish. Author Bob Lindsman has written many fine books, including Great Lakes Steelhead, Michigan Trout Streams, and the Asable River Guide. Bob has been a dedicated fly fisherman and guide for many years. Kelly Gallup is a proprietor of the Troutsman Fly Shop in Traverse City. A consummate professional and experimenter, he has designed many unique and successful flies over the past 25 years. He is a well-respected Michigan guide. I used to snorkel a lot, and we'd see a lot of the fish in the river that were not in the areas that we were taught they would be. You'd see a fish in a hole or in a tail out or the, anywhere he wants to be. The, the first thing we noticed, they weren't where they were supposed to be, the, the predatory, the big fish. And secondly, the next day they wouldn't be in the same spot, which told us that we were generally fishing, not always, but often we were fishing areas where there were no fish, at least no predatory fish. So we started fishing different types of patterns, bigger patterns, uh, trying to elicit a strike, not just throwing the traditional gray ghost or muddler or you know your typical streamer and swinging it. And we started fishing flies that were a little bit more aggressive, you know, maybe two or three times the size of the traditional fly we'd be fishing. When you go underwater, you see fish that are just staggering. I snorkeled about 200 yards of river on our home, my home water here, the Boardman, which I thought I knew every fish intimately. And what I found out was that in the first 100 yards, I saw a half dozen fish bigger than I'd ever caught in my life. If you're not hungry, food has, shows no interest. I mean, it just doesn't appeal to you. The smell doesn't, anything like that. So, but as a predator, even though the fish may not be hungry, he can't stop that, that triggering mechanism that says in his brain, I have to defend my territory. And we often refer back to like uh, instincts of bears and things like that, because you know, bears maul people often, but they don't really eat people all that often as a food thing. You've simply intruded on the bear's uh, territory, and you pay the price. He swats you around. And seeing how the trout is the biggest predator in the system, we decided that it wasn't likely you could take a traditional gray ghost, for example, and elicit a response from that big fish. Conversely, if you take a fly that maybe is five, six inches long, and you splat it down in the water, and then you try to escape, and that's the key. That's why we use such fast retrieves and why we hit the fly hard and we fish very aggressively. We're trying to elicit a predatory instinct in the fish that this little tiny gray ghost, although it's a great fly and it's a great searching fly for juvenile fish, the likelihood of a big carnivore-sized trout eating this as a territorial 
response isn't nearly as great as it would be to something like this or the, you know, the bigger zoo cougars and things like that that we fish. And that's why we run through the river as fast as we do. We're simply looking to offend a few fish, the bigger predatory fish, and get a response from them. We're not necessarily looking for the hungry fish. Now, if you've got a hungry fish, you know, you invade his territory and he's hungry, that's just about a guaranteed, you know, hookup. Coming up. Get away with that one. Good fish. Seventeen, maybe six. Yeah, maybe six. Ready, everybody? Coming up to you. Beautiful fish. Nice spawning colors. Oh, the neck is nice. Oh, beautiful. Look at the colors. It's dropped to the camera. Gorgeous fish. Way to go, baby. two basic types of line. There's a sink tip line and there's a full sinking line. Uh, both come in different densities. The densities mean how fast they sink. The sink tips come in from anywhere from 5 foot to 25 foot. For the most part you'll see that there's a 24 foot head which is the sinking portion of the line. And a sink tip line, there's a portion of it that floats and the tip or the head is the part that sinks, the last 5 to 24 feet. Originally, the, the sink tip lines, when they were produced, were do, done by Jim Teeny, and they were really designed to swing a fly. They weren't necessarily, they're designed to cast long distances and swing a fly through a column of water, and they're the best thing that ever happened for that. Uh, they're also efficient in the rivers here to fish streamers you know, wherever, uh, but I, I prefer to use the, uh, the full sinking line. The downside to the sink tip line is that it, it has a tendency to chase the floating portion of the fly line. So it's harder to keep uh, a constant depth, if you will. But like we were talking earlier, we try to use a pretty short leader. We were talking about letting the fly line sink the fly as opposed to the fly sinking with the fly line or, or sinking on its own. And the way we uh, achieve that fly to follow the line is to use a pretty short leader. As you can see here, uh, they're very simple. I use a piece of 20 pound Maxima Chameleon for the butt section. It's about 18 inches long. And then I use anywhere from 18 to 24 inches of 12, 10, or 8. One of the keys to that is that you often hear people talk about clarity of the water and things like that for the size tippet. And that's really not how I depend or how I decide which size tippet I'm going to use. I generally run 10 or 12 pound, and if I use a smaller fly, for example, say a size 6 woolly bugger or something like that, I reduce the tippet size strictly to get the fly to move. I don't, it gives it a little bit more action than it would be if it was on 12 pound, but it's never a clarity thing. Again, we're working for fish that are looking for a big response, a territorial response, and they're not really keying in on the tippet. So basically, we just use a 3 foot, 3 and a half foot leader. Uh, 18 inches of 20 pound, 18 to 24 inches of 8 to 12 pound. Kelly Gallup, as a noted taxidermist, gained a tremendous insight into the food preferences of large trout when examining their stomach contents during preparations for mounting. He found that food items common in each trophy trout were fins, fur, claws, and web feet in 99% of the fish examined. This is certainly something for anglers to consider when stocking large fish. Favorite sources of protein for large trout include sculpins, darters, dace, shiners, and other trout. Other common food sources found in trophy trout are leeches and crayfish. Most people are aware of leeches as a pattern to imitate for trout, but few think to use crayfish patterns. 
even though in many parts of the country they are a favorite source of forage. Some of Kelly and Bob's favorite streamer patterns are the Zoo Cougar, Kiwi Muddler, Butt Monkey, and Strip Leech. These should be in sizes two and four. Popular color choices are brown, olive, black, and chartreuse. When a trout reaches 13 inches in length, it has begun the irreversible change to larger prey. By the time a trout is 16 inches in length, it is generally the top or near top predator in most systems. This size trout and larger needs a lot of nourishment, something only good sized prey can provide. The jerk strip retrieve is one of four retrieves recommended by Bob and Kelly. The jerk strip is by far the most effective method because it triggers aggressive behavior from large trout, whether they are hungry or not. Key to this technique is good line control. In our book, Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout, we cover quite a few different retrieving methods uh, that you use under different conditions. Uh, the dredge technique, uh, the old classic technique that most people use, which is just you know, a straight across or quartering down and let the fly swing. But we've found through the years, and in fact, to be candid, Kelly's the one that, that taught me this retrieve, that the jerk strip retrieve is the most effective retrieve for moving really trophy-sized trout. And the way it works is that you want to pulse, you want to move the fly with the rod tip, and then you strip to take up the slack. What that does, if you move the fly whatever amount of distance you want to, 12 to 18 to inches to 2 feet, with the pulse of the rod tip, you strip. And when you strip and bring your rod tip back to the starting position, it causes a natural pause in the fly. And the fly will, will pause, flutter, and almost swoon like a wounded prey item. And that's really what makes it effective. So what happens? The fly comes in and it violates, you know, it intrudes on the big trout's territory and it makes that dart to get away. And then it pauses like it's wounded you. So the big fish is going to jump on it. It's almost instinct. I mean, the fish doesn't really have, it's almost irresistible to them. So watch my hands here. I'm actually moving the fly with the rod tip, letting it bounce back and stripping to take up the slack. This erratic motion seems to excite the fish, and it can trigger two instincts. If they're hungry, the prey looks wounded and easy to catch. If they're not hungry, then they're just protecting their territory. Their aggression seems to peak when that fly flutters and acts wounded. And whether they're hitting the fly to eat it or hitting the fly to punish it for intruding, we really don't care. It's just a real exciting way to fish. You keep track of your fly, you can see it coming back, and you can see the fly come, or the fish come and get the fly. My knees actually go weak when I see a big one come. I think next to tarpon fishing, it's about the most exciting thing you can do with a fly rod in your hand. Come charging out of there, big boy. Oh, 
here. Come get it. Come get it. Come get it. Well, this time of year, we're moving the flies, at least I'm moving the flies, a little bit slower than I would in the summer. Uh, the water temperature has dropped uh, several degrees from what we would consider optimum for streamer fishing in the summer months. I'm guessing, uh, I haven't taken the temperature yet, but I'm guessing the temperature is about 45 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the fish have just finished or just completing their spawning rituals, and they're getting ready for winter. And they should be pretty aggressive. They should be hungry. And I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, the water may warm up a degree or two, and that can be enough to trigger them. Come on, baby. Come on, Don. Boy, what a gorgeous hook shot. You know, our book was predominantly about catching trophy fish or big fish. And what we found is that a, a true carnivore, a trophy-sized trout, can eat half its body length. So if you've got a 10-inch fish, he'll eat a 5-inch fish. 20, 10, the math continues. It's not uncommon at all to find a 25-inch fish with a 12, 13-inch rainbow, brook, or brown in its stomach. I mean, that's just, that's their food source. And those fish don't make mistakes by swimming in there. And if they do get in that situation, they try to get away. They'll, they'll run. And that's what we're going to try to do with this fly is we're going to try to invade on the trout, start swinging it sideways with a lot of animation, giving the fly that look like it could escape, but there's something wrong. It's, it's getting away, but all of a sudden, ooh, got a cramp. Something happened. Something's telling the, the predator that, hey, I can, I got a meal here. And that's what we look for when we're doing this style of fishing. From the boat, it's the same thing. As we float down, we just try to hit a lot of water. We try to hit every three to four foot of water with the retrieve. We don't spend a lot of time on one spot. Like I would never sit here and cast 10 times to that spot. We just cast it. If a predator is going to react, it's going to react right now. And when it's done, when the fly swung through, your second or third cast, you, you just, it's almost never do you get a fish on that retrieve. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really fun way to fish because you're, you know, it's so active. You're, you make a cast, you go in, you make your retrieve, you step down three feet, and you can cover a lot of water. And what we're looking for is players. We're just looking, we're not going to pound the water over and over, hoping that the, fly, the fish decides, yeah, that's something I want to eat. We're going to continuously look for the fish that's ready to eat and that's a player. Today we fish several types of structures specific to Upper Manistee River. Fallen trees are an excellent lie for large trout. Grassy areas and undercut banks will usually provide large fish with food and cover. Overhanging trees or branches are also excellent holding areas. Come on, come charging out of there, big boy. Large rocks and boulders are obvious holding areas because they provide trout with current breaks. Gravel flats, combined with other structure, are good spots, especially if they're adjacent to deep water. Fast action rods are the order of the day for casting full sinking fly lines and large streamers. Today we used a POW LGA906 and a SAGE XP906, which are well suited to this purpose. Thank you. 
You got a minute before you go into the bridge. Yeah, people come to the library. Let's start again. Okay. Rainbow. Rainbow. Might need to get close. Kelly just told me? He said you got 100 yards, you hero. Oh, look at that. That's a nice, that's a nice fish of the day. Chartreuse. Isn't that gorgeous? Nice job. Good job. All right. If you're fishing in the Traverse City area, take the time to drop by the Troutsman Fly Shop and meet Kelly and his professional staff. They have great equipment and can provide excellent advice on fishing in their area. For the recipes to the various streamer patterns we are using, go to our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Bob and Kelly have assembled a truly unique and important book on streamer fly fishing that will change the way you stock large trout. I strongly recommend you get a copy. From all of us at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher is sponsored by Bank of Montreal Atlantic Salmon Federation MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products.